Mosaic Stadium. We can say this regardless of what happens. It's the final game here for 2023. The Riders need to win it, and the Argos certainly have fond memories of the last time they were here, Glenn, winning the Grey Cup last November. Chad Kelly was a big part of that. We wondered how much he would rest after they clinched first, but here we are. He's starting again today. Yeah, he's starting again. Chad Kelly's career in the Canadian Football League really got started here at Mosaic Stadium. His 14-2 record, the best start for any quarterback in the 150-year history of the Toronto Argonauts. Jake Dolagala started out strong with wins against BC and Winnipeg in his first two starts this year, but it's been downhill since. Six straight losses. Six straight losses after improving to 6-5 and five after beating Winnipeg on Labor Day. And for Craig Dickinson, well, it's cut and dry. They have to win and then hope for some help next week. Ryan Dinwiddie's Argos 3-1 and one since clinching first in the East over a month ago. A win today and they'll tie the franchise record for wins in a season with one more game after this in Ottawa to close it out. The Argos won the toss. They have deferred. So the Riders will get the ball first. And a new kicker, Boris Beattie, is getting a break for this one. So it's Alfredo Lozada from Mexico, global player, to get it started here. Final game at Mosaic Stadium 2023. And it's Thomas Bertrand Houdon on the return, getting it up across the 40 on that kick by Lozada. So Jake Dolagala, who is making his ninth start, but got his first CFL start against the Argos here a year ago, July. Yeah, and there's his numbers. I mentioned his, his first two starts this season against BC and Winnipeg, the two top teams in the West Division. And if the Riders can get the win, that doesn't guarantee a playoff spot. Calgary can determine that next week. But if they don't get the win, it's pretty simple. They're done. This could be it. That big for Saskatchewan. And Olegala to throw on first down. Looks off to the left. And he had it receiver it got deflected and into the hands of that receiver Kean Schaefer Baker no whistle Quantez Stiggers picks up the fumble this is Argo ball as he just trots out of bounds near midfield what a start it got deflected into the hands of Schaefer Baker but he couldn't hang on after he had clearly made the catch well we got a great look at it so first of all did he make the catch cleanly Schaefer Baker off the tip here looks like he's got control doesn't look like the ground. Now, does he get touched by contact before it gets up? The previous play is under review by the command center. Because that's the next thing that they're looking at right now in the command center. Did Royce Mechie, the free safety, touch Schaefer Baker down by contact after he had control of the football? So he's got the ball down there now. No one's touched him yet. I think he's down. I think you're right. Looking at his left knee, it was still touching when Mechie touched him. And they did let it play out, which is the right thing to do, not uh, blow the whistle. Absolutely. So it looked for a moment like it might be the Argo ball and a turnover. Here's the view of the command center. After review by the command center, the Saskatchewan player was down with contact at the 29-yard line. First down. I think Dinwiddie is trying to explain to the officials that he felt that Mechie punched the ball out as he was basically touching or just prior to touching him, but it looked to me like this is the correct call. That, that's control of the football, so that one, you check that box, and then it's the left knee down, met you with the left hand, touches Schaefer Baker down by contact. I think they got the call right. I think they did too. He was down, and what a great catch, what a great adjustment by Schaefer Baker after it was deflected. So a first down for the Riders. Big play to get them inside Time the Argo 30. Time to reset the clock to 14.32. And, and uh, an early break, let's put it that way, for Saskatchewan, who again need this win to stay alive. Absolutely. Needing a good start against this Argo team that really has not taken its foot off the gas since clinching first in the East. A 3-1 and one record after that. That one thrown off to the left and no one there. Jamal Peters back in the Argo lineup, the closest one to it. A look at the Argo or the Ryder offensive. Well, run game has been a lot better over the last three or four weeks for Jamal Morrow. who's close to 1,000 and Craig Dickinson told us that Philip Blake's addition, this is his third start in a row, has been a big reason for that. Big physical guard helping in the run game and Jamal Morrow looking for a thousand yard season he needs 114 yards in this one this afternoon to get there second and ten now at the Toronto 29 opening possession of this game for Dola Gala stands in and 
he completes it. A wide open Samuel Amelis, who is still on the move, had the first down and still fighting for more down around the 15, close to it. For Emelis, who's really had a lot more targets lately, been a big part of that rider offense. Yeah, and I just mentioned Jamal Morrow, Rod, has, you know, he's looking for that thousand yard season, wants to get the win, though, and he has to do some heavy lifting in the blocking department out here to give Dola Gala a chance to throw this curl, and then Sam Emelis lost a little yards and then got back to the marker. He too chasing a milestone, coming in 40 yards shy of a thousand yards receiving. One of two rider receivers chasing that. From the Argo 16, touchdown Saskatchewan. Just like that, Kean Schaefer Baker with a couple of big catches on this drive. And this is exactly what the green and white need in their final game of the regular season, trying to stay in playoff contention. Yeah, you, you got to be sometimes lucky to be good. And you know the saying, it, it, this is a tremendous throw to protect Schaefer Baker with the possibility of the hit coming from Royce Mechie from the safety spot. Schaefer Baker gets it right in the belly and right across the goal line. They get the break on the first play and finish the drive. Slow start to the season for him on the injured list, but that's his third touchdown catch of the season. Brett Lother with the point after straight through. Opening possession, opening touchdown for a team that needs to win. Four plays, 68 yards in under two minutes. Saskatchewan seven. Argonauts nothing. The CFL on TSN. Wide side, the right side of the field for Jake Dolagala. Now the key here for Schaefer Baker is he's got to get around this jam and then back to his route quickly. He puts his right foot in the ground, gets there, and the ball arrives right at the exact time it needed to to protect Baker from the hit. Football, great sport. I know a lot of people out watching this, but free Gaza, man. There's a lot of people. So on the kickoff by the Riders with that seven-point lead, Javon Leak has the ball up at the Argo 30. Spins and is taken down shy of the 35. But he is Shaver Baker in his third year at a Guelph. And we'll look at his third touchdown again of the season. Well, and it's an important series for the Riders. So you want to get early momentum here at home, get the fans behind him. And also, Jake Dolagala hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in three games. That's his first TD pass in three games. That's good for your mental health as a starting quarterback and an offense. Get the break on that first deep ball to Schaefer Baker. Timing was there on down by contact and they finished the drive and that's got to help their confidence. From Hamburg, New York, near Buffalo, is Jake Dolagala. Look at Kean Schaefer Media Baker. Have you loving the oppressor and hating the oppress. Don't ever forget that. Make sure you read everything and learn a little bit. Don't ever give up on your dreams if you're watching at home, man. Keep chasing your dreams. Injured players, Daniel Kwamu for the Argos. We'll take a break. Back after the 15-yard grab as he gets closer to 1,000. But for a number of players uh, looking for a target here. Yeah, important, of course, for the individual. But in the ultimate team sport, you know, all those guys are just wanting to register the win. And I, I, I'm sure we'll see Chad Kelly for 152 yards. We'll see Olette for whatever he needs. And then that'll probably be it for this afternoon. He's got the ball now, and he grinds out a couple of yards. He came in 41 yards shy of a thousand something he's been quite open about it I mean hey team first but uh, for Kelly and Olet I'm sure those milestones mean something as well certainly the wins do for Chad Kelly yeah I don't mind this idea though from from coach Dinwiddie to start his young quarterback I mean he is just 14 and 2 in his career 14 and 1 this year keep him through the regular process and then start him playing a few series and get him out to a left does not have enough for a first down he gets it up just across the 40 but it'll be a two and out for that Argo offense but yeah that's the question regarding Kelly we just don't know for how long last week we thought he might be done at halftime and he kept playing until they got the lead against Ottawa and then he took him out yeah and the, the only thing I, I wonder about again coach Dinwiddie having him go through his process all week long in the work week and then starting the game not playing at all because they've got that spot locked up but the only one that is the question of all that there was the Winnipeg game if you're going to do that, why didn't you do it for the Winnipeg game? That's, that's the one game he did not play in at all. That was Cameron Dukes. 
and a little bit of Brian Scott, the third springer. Here's the punt to Mario Alford. Good returners in this game, the top two in touchdowns and punt returns in Alford and Javon Lake. So here comes Dola Gala again. Mentioning coming from Western New York near Buffalo, Chad Kelly played high school football in that area as well. But look at what he's done in the difference, home and away. Yeah, and that's, you know, good news for riders, the riders and their fans, that, you know, he is at home in a game that they have to win or they are out. The Calgary Stampeders will take the final spot in the playoffs if they don't find a way to finish this game here this afternoon. But Dola Gala has not been the reason by himself for this six-game skid. On first down, handing off Jamal Mora, one of those ones listed with a milestone coming in 114 yards, shy of 1,000. How about that Argonaut defense coming into this one? Well, Florin Arimulati is, is resting. He, he's the leader in, in sacks for the uh, Argos on defense, but Thomas Costigan will play for him. And then if you look at their... Linebacking core, it's a solid group. Darius Pickett, Winton McManus, four picks, 75 defensive tackles for him. Jamal Peters anchors the secondary. They got four guys on their defense that have four picks, and Peters is one of them. Throwing in second and seven. They got the heat on, and Thomas Costigan finishing off. Robbie Smith coming in there as well to put the pressure on Dola Gala, who is sacked. The team with the most sacks in the Canadian Football League adds to their total there. Yeah, take a look. Costigan is on the left side as, as well. So there's kind of a team meeting as they get there. And when you take a look at this front seven for the Argos, it really is the strength of their team. They're, the line of scrimmage, they have been dominant all year. They're sacks allowed and sacks four, number one by a mile in the game. Javon Leak on the return. He had a big punt return for a touchdown the last time these two teams met. Touchdown Atlantic back in late July. So Chad Kelly, they did not look back, winning the great cup. Let's go down to field level and Britt Dort. Yeah, a game Chad Kelly talked about was a dream come true. He said it kick-started my CFL career. Ryan did what he talked about Chad Kelly coming in that late in the fourth quarter, saying I couldn't adjust the game plan then. I just had to call what would keep Kelly comfortable. I told him if you don't see anything, just take off. Well, you saw it there on second and 15. He took off on that pivotal moment where he got the first down. Every player I talked to this week said there's extra motivation to have that same feeling here today that we had the last time we played in this stadium. Chad Kelly also saying it's surreal to be back this good of a team this time around. And Brett, they stick to the running game now in the second possession back to Olette. But we talked to Ryan Dinwiddie earlier about Chad Kelly and that moment in the Grey Cup. That also set the table really for this year and the trust they had in him to be a number one quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this year, sign him to a contract extension. And wow, was I impressed how, how he handled that. His, just his passion for the game, his study habits to learn the nuance of Canadian football. Second and nine and throwing and completing two up in the rider territory up at the 50 for Tavares Daniels. But another brilliant game with Kelly against the Ottawa Red Blacks last week over 140 yards receiving. Well, he's having an all-star season again. Tavares Daniels, number one target for Chad Kelly. And I mentioned off the, the top of the show that Chad Kelly win-loss record, pretty impressive list when you look at the 150-year history of the Argos or the CFL list for that matter. Back to Olet with three carries for six yards before that one picks up maybe one. But yeah, that record, 14-2. and two. Exclusive company? Wow. You're darn right. Bold Levi Mitchell and the great start he had with the Stan Peters at 15 and 1 and the legendary Jackie Parker with Edmonton back in the 50s at 14 and 2. 150 year history of this Argo football team and that's number one. And this is the Flutie teams in the 90s. Chad Kelly off to such a great start in his Canadian football career. Second down and 10 now. Yes. Open receiver is Daniels again. Wow, they have been clicking lately. And that sets him up for a first and goal inside the Ryder 10. 
Seems like Jaden Dalkey just got a little bit of trouble getting too low here because it looks like a zone defense to me. You see Larry Dean dropping back. He jumps a crossing route down the seam goes Devaris Daniels in between the outside deep defender who is Amari Henderson and the safety Jaden Dalkey. The veteran Devaris Daniels finding that soft spot. Last week he had six catches for 141 yards and a touchdown. Big one there. First and goal at the 10. Olet inside the five and down to the three. Second and goal coming up. Have a look at that Toronto offense. Trayvon Tate's going to start at right tackle in this game for Dejon Allen, and he's probably going to be ready for the playoffs, but they're resting him in this one this afternoon. And we talked about the milestones and the all-star seasons that a lot of these Argos have had. DeVaris Daniels, one of them, will let another closing in on a thousand-yard season. Back on a second down and goal. Back to a left. Left side. Touchdown. Three more yards for A.J. Olette and another touchdown on the ground. His eighth rushing touchdown of the season. His tenth on the year as Toronto gets within an extra point in tying this game. It just seems like when, when A.J. Olette gets down close to the goal line, it's almost impossible to stop him. We saw it in the flashback of the Grey Cup right here at Mosaic Stadium after Kelly took off and got that 20 yards rushing, how A.J. Olette finished the drive with a big runoff tackle, just like that one. He had a couple of touchdowns in that Grey Cup against Winnipeg last November, so among the many Argos with fond memories on the return. Another touchdown there for Olette. Try here coming up from their kicker making his CFL debut. Angelo Lozada makes it a 7 7 tie. They drive down, it's capped off by 34 as he gets closer to a thousand yard rushing season. That Argo drive covering five plays, 62 yards in just over three minutes with the big play. A couple of catches for DeVaris Daniels. That's the biggest one that got them close. Yeah, that's the splitting of the zone defense there, and then Olette finishes it off. Uh, a good drive that gets Daniels close to 1,000 yards receiving, 24 yards away. Olette, 24 yards away from 1,000 yards rushing, and, you know, Chad Kelly is closing in on 4,000. He's passed for 51 yards so far in this one. And Mario Alford has it. Up shy of the 50, Jack Kassar coming in. On the special teams tackle, it's Dola Gal and the Riders. Last time, moved down, scored the touchdown to open up the scoring in this game and back on the field now to start at the 29. Riders had the lead against Calgary last week, but could not hang on in the second half. One point led by 13. More first downs than Calgary, more yards than Calgary. Didn't get the W. Ball now spotted up at the 30. The toss to the right to Jamal Morrow. And Argos have that all wrapped up. It's going nowhere. Maybe a loss of a half yard. Boy, Corey Mace's group on defense just so good at the line of scrimmage. And it doesn't seem to matter where they are in the rotation, whether it's Jared Brinkman in there in the interior, Sean Oakman, Hendricks. I mean, lead the league in sacks by a long way. I mean, 63 total coming in. Got one here this afternoon already. Yeah, Brinkman at nose right now. Dola Gala. Pass. That's Keon Schaefer Baker as the rider touchdown in this game and a first down. Schaefer Baker getting some yardage early on in this one up to the rider 48. Key here against McFadden is to get again around the jam and back to your spot. I mean, it's it's one thing to get pushed out of your lane. Most receivers will will have that happen to them at one time or another in a play, but you got to get back to that spot. And the timing there between Dola Gala and Schaefer Baker is on this afternoon. He has three catches, 72 yards, and a touchdown. From the rider 48 with time. for Sean Bain, one of their top receivers, and it is just a bit too far. Yeah, top, top guy. I mean, he's had a great year. He's 
had a thousand yard season basically he's closing in we've talked about the Argos that are looking at that milestone he's one of them as well he's led their team in the big plays the 30 yard plus plays for Saskatchewan some of those coming on little bubble screens that he takes the rest of the way he and Emelis looking at a thousand yard season Bain had a touchdown against the Argos and Halifax touchdown Atlantic in July from Dolagala, who throws off to his right, and that one is caught inside the Argo 50. First catch of the afternoon for Mitch Picton, and another first down for the Riders on the move. See Quantez Stegers out there in coverage. He, he's he's so close that he's too close. He's 42 is is all over Picton here and almost thought about cutting underneath and then got in that spot where he was a little late to cut under and a little late to make the tackle and just had to push him out of bounds. In his seventh season out of the University of Regina, Mitch Picton. There's Bain's first catch as he turns it up. And he's still going inside the 30. Little stiff arm there for Pickett. But another first down. And this Rider offense has looked impressive so far in this game. And that's what I mean about the 30-plus plays. It's tracked by the league and stat on the big play to, in the big play department. He had eight coming in, and he's done a couple of them just like this. He catches a bubble screen behind the line of scrimmage, makes a bunch of guys miss. Low center of gravity, good feet, quickness, and the big play by Bain. And he is six yards shy of 1,000 receiving now. A lot of running after that catch. Gain to 26, down to the arm of 23. Another pass off the fingertips that time of Schaefer Baker who was inside the Argo 10. Dolagala really threaded the needle there. That's He didn't have much choice on the accuracy of where he had to hit Schaefer Baker here on this route. I mean, he's he's going, watch how he's trying to weave his way through the linebacking core and how close they were. I believe that's Pickett. No, it wasn't Pickett. Jordan Williams right underneath that that drop, but that's how close he was. Second and ten now. Tie game 7-7 seven, seven from the Argo 23 with time. A look into the end zone. Little bumping there and was falling into the hands of Royce Mechie who could not hang on, but the bottom line is it is incomplete and it's a field goal situation coming up here for Saskatchewan. Talked about that jam and, and Schaefer Baker a couple of times doing a real nice job of getting around this. It's not really a jam because you can't make contact that far down the field, but you got to get around that DB and back to your spot. And you see how McFadden cut him off from getting back to the spot that time? That's why that one's incomplete. Adam Corsack will put it down at the Argo 31 for Brett Lothar, his first field goal attempt of the day. And it is through. And the Riders have their second lead of this ball game. Following up the touchdown drive with one down for a field goal. Big game last week for DeVaris Daniels, who's having an all-star season. You mentioned this game against Ottawa. His two games against Ottawa. He's over 300 yards in, in the two games this year against the Red Blacks. Big one last week. 141, picking up where he left off this afternoon. And as he closes in on that 1,000, that's a milestone he's never had in his career. Closest in 16 with Calvary's Rookie of the Year. Had to, had to double check that. <laughs> really, the kind of career he's had. Yeah. I mean, winning just about everywhere. Look at what's happened, where he's gone. I mean, just uh, if, if DeVaris Daniels is on your team in the receiving car, you're winning 70% of your games. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and getting to the final, getting to the cup. And we saw that you saw the question marks. And just because this Argo team has the record they have and have locked it up as early as they have, doesn't guarantee you anything. Second and seven after the left carry for three. Kelly's waving them, trying to find an open receiver, and he does. That is caught by David Unger inside the rider zone. He is taken down by Nick Marshall at the Saskatchewan 50. Well, we talked about the front four on defense. How about the offensive line giving Chad Kelly this much time to basically orchestrate to his receivers what he wants? He's the conductor back there of the band, and he's just waving and moving the baton back and forth. You cannot cover this long in a 65-yard wide field 
and stay. He's going to find somebody open with that much time. Under his first year with the air goes a first down from the 51. And Kelly just throws it into the turf. Didn't find anyone a second down coming up. Here's the Saskatchewan defense. Anthony Lanier moves back inside. Brian Cox will play off the edge on the defensive line. They'll get Lanier back into his defensive tackle position where he's most comfortable. A lot of talk about Larry Dean. He's had an outstanding season, but C.J. Reed has really accumulated a lot of great stats, has an interception, 60 defensive tackles. Nick Marshall had his best game against Calgary in the last month or two last week. Big second down. Lots of time off to the right, complete for a first down. Devontae Coxey, who's averaging over 20 yards of reception, picks up one there for a first down inside the Ryder 40. See Chad Kelly with lots of time. When you got lots of time, a receiver can really work the route the way he wants. This is a, a deep, deep out route, and that is a throw you don't see often if a quarterback's at all getting any pressure. But if he's got time, you can your receiver can go up the field. 15, 20, sometimes 25 yards, then put the brakes on and come back to that outrun. Gets it down to the 37 of the Riders. Argos on the first down. Oh, pressure coming from Graham Cox. Before Kelly could get it away and a live ball is out. Who's got it? Riders looking for a big time over. They've got it. The fumble forced by Graham Cox. Kelly cops it up. Saskatchewan football. Number 50, that two-point stand-up position, Russ end position with the right arm, knocks down the hands of Trayvon Tate around the edge. And Chad Kelly, who uh, we were just talking about having lots of time to sit back there, throw the deep outs, scan the entire field. That time ran out on him on that play. One of the few times that the Argos have turned over the football, they've been great in that department, but... This is the fumble, and the Riders with the three-point lead now have the ball. And in good shape across the 45 now for a first down for Jake Dolegala. Play fit with time. He's looking deep. He has a receiver. It's Ellis. Samuel Emelis has it down at the Argo 10. And the big plays keep coming for Saskatchewan. That's got to put MLS over 1,000. It does. Hits that 1,000-yard milestone for the first time in his young career in a big way as Saskatchewan pressing again up 10-7, looking for more. Here at Mosaic, it's 10-7 Riders, and they're pressing for more. And 169, that's their net offense yardage-wise, Glenn. And this is a team that has to win, and they're playing like a team that has to win. Yeah, they're, they're getting contributions on both sides of the ball right now. Defense gets the turnover. We'll see if they can finish the drive and put some more points on the board. But, again, the reality is for Saskatchewan, if they win, they don't take control. Calgary still has control of the final playoff spot when they play next week. However, if they lose, they're done. And they're playing like it. So that's the only choice they have right now, win the game and then hope next week. And you're right, that loss in Calgary last week really hurt them even more from the standpoint that they lost control of the fate of their season. Stampeders winning last night in Vancouver. But hey, they do know this. They lose. They are absolutely done. So right now, pressing for more against the Argos. From the 10, end zone. Intercepted Quantez Stiggers snuffing out that drive by Saskatchewan after they were pushing down following a turnover in the Kelly fumble they turn it over right back stickers with the pick great players bounce back when when they make a mistake or they get beat it was stickers who was covering Emelis on the deep rope that got him down there he was in good position didn't make the play Emelis did and he just let that one go flushes it plays that corner comes off his man and cuts underneath this throw if Dolagala puts a little more air on that you know, maybe Bean has a shot at it, but that's a great bounce back play from Quantez Stiggers. Ryan Denwood was talking about how between him and Jamal Peters, or whoever was playing corner at the time, this first down, 
That's Dejan Brissett who's going to say they no longer flip the field in the boundary. They just keep them as left and right. But interesting because of Stigger's versatility. Offside. Saskatchewan number 94. That penalty be declined. The result of the play is a first down. The other thing is I think this, uh, this Argo defense loves their give-take category. They love how many times they have taken the ball away and how few times they have given it away. And when they had the fumble, they said, we better get that one back so we can get back to even immediately. It didn't take them long. The differential there between these two teams, by the way, is 45. Just went back to 45. But Stickers breaking good work in behind the line coming in C.J. Rebus on A.J. Willett. C.J. on A.J. And there's lost yardage in the first down for the Argos. Yeah, I mean, that's what I meant about highlighting him defensively because he you know he has had an all-star all-star caliber season he's he's coming off the edge here and you know second to Larry Dean in tackles and you know and Larry's had a great a great season as well so he's the leader of that defense but and deserves the accolades but CJ Rivas has put together a great campaign lots of one second and 11 Argo 44 after the pick still just a three point Saskatchewan lead with Kelly stepping up Deep and a little too far there for Daniels falls incomplete and the punting unit will come on now for Toronto. See some see some great route running here from DeVars Daniels. Look at him lean outside really sell the outside cut and then look how wide open he is. Chad Kelly bought himself some time so he could get open that far down the field and just missed him. The Argo punter, John Haggerty, has missed the last eight weeks with a knee injury. Boris Beattie sitting today. He'd been doing the punting while Haggerty was hurt. Haggerty is back. The Australian, one of the top punters in the game, gets it away to Alford. Down at the 15, up across the 20. Jamal Morrow. Getting closer to a thousand yards rushing, more importantly to him, the young middle linebacker for the Argos, who missed last week with injury, comes on and makes the tackle for a loss. Yeah, Jordan Williams right here is going to just hit hit this line of scrimmage on the fly. It's basically called a run blitz. So Corey Mays saying, okay, if they're going to run on first down the first time, they're probably going to go back to it. I'm going to cancel all the gaps up front, get my linebackers up there aggressively, and Jordan Williams catches them in the backfield. Loss of three in a second and 13. Riders. Three-man rush. That's complete to Bain. Turns it up. Lots of room. Sean Bain still going. Mason Pierce finally tracks him down. Another big play. Turned in by Bain and that rider to get them deep into the Argo zone and Sean Bain goes over a thousand yards receiving. Yeah, so so Bain over a thousand in style. This was second and long after the loss, so big play here for 15. Emelis on a deep ball goes over a thousand. Again, both players would trade all that in for a W. You're right. They weren't nickel and diming their way to a thousand on this day with big plays putting them over the top. So first and ten at the Argo 36 now. Oh, swinging it out to Morrow, who was met right away by Jamal Peters, and and Morrow is still down. Peters had him teed up as Morrow looked back to catch that short pass. Yeah, this, this is. Uh, I saw that one coming in. And Jamal Peters was in a zone. When you're in a zone in the in the secondary, you've got all your eyes are right in, in this area. You're, you're looking at the line of scrimmage. You're looking at the quarterback. But anything coming out, any release of a back or crossing route from a receiver, you can just close in a hurry. Morrow got up and still in. And a second and nine at the 35. with the souvenir football. I'm just shocked that someone up there caught it. But <laughs> got rid of that in a hurry after he got his six points. Yeah, you know, this was this was a throw that Jake Dolagala threw in for, from that last series with the pick. Came back and learned from it. Now he's got a chance to put a little more air on the ball and not allow any 
see those undercutting DBs get near it. Hits Emelis, a little more trajectory on the football, and he learned from that interception. Put some more points on the board. Second touchdown pass of the afternoon thrown by Jake Dolagala and Brett Lother with a point after. To make it a 10-point rider lead, just over 10 minutes to go until halftime. Emelis continues to be a big part of that Saskatchewan offense. Well over 1,000 on the season. Three catches, 99 yards, and a touchdown. Great throw and great read from Jake Dolagala. This is a cover two zone look, and one receiver from the inside is going to hold Mechie so that he can't get down the rail to this outside. If you get a cover two look with a zone look like this, all you have to do is influence and hold that safety because he's got half the field to cover. He can't get wide to Emelis. And a great read by Dolagala and an even better throw. so far here in the second quarter of course it means nothing to the riders if they can't hang on to this lead it's up to 10 a short kickoff and it's Javon Lee and a good place to start for Chad Kelly in the Argo offense just across their 50. So we're into the second quarter still seeing Chad Kelly I know they're behind and I know that would bug him <laughs> it seemed to last week yeah. and he didn't deny it they were trailing when it looked like and we were looking at the body language on the sideline that Ryan Dinwiddie wanted to pull him and Cameron Dukes went in for one play and after that Kelly came on they were down by four he engineered a couple of scoring drives they went ahead and then he got out of the game yeah I, I, I think it's risky but Taking to the left and completing that one. Second catch of the afternoon for Unger across midfield. You know, and like I said off the top, I, I, I like the idea for Coach Dinwiddie to start him, let him go through his work week progress and, and or uh, process and just make sure that he is prepared because he's still young in his career. However, the longer he stays out there, the, the, the increased chance of his, you know, follow through and his thumb hitting a helmet or, you know, an ankle or something small that bugs him throughout the playoffs in a game that has nothing to do with the standings for the Argos. Stands in, completes it for another first down inside the Ryder 35. So back and forth they go. Devaris Daniels following up last week and that big performance with another good one so far in the first half. You know, and, and these guys are competitors and these guys are guys that, you know, want to go out and win every game. I mean, if you play cards with them, if you play crib with them on the plane, they want to beat you badly. And that's why they're playing at the pro level. So don't think for a second Chad Kelly's okay with coming out. Well, he's getting closer to 4,000 yards passing on the season, too. He completes that one to Brissett, who gets it down near another Argo first down. It looks like it'll be close. Or excuse me, sorry, pick up a five, not close. Not to mention the overall record for the Argos that is, you know, I, I think a smaller part is probably down the priority list a little bit, but it, it is important. They've got 14 wins. They're trying to get to 15. And could they get to 60? And 16 is the most any team has ever had in the CFL. Kelly. Intended for Coxey, Marshall with his fifth interception of the season. Play straight man-to-man -man defense. Watch Nick Marshall flop hips. He's on outside shade of Coxey on this route, and then he's going to switch hips right there and get inside. Now he's on the inside of Coxey in a man-to-man -man situation. That doesn't mean you can't execute the play offensively because he does get some separation, but what you can't do is underthrow it. And if you underthrow it with a DB on inside, underneath coverage, that's what can happen, and Nick Marshall gets Kelly. He says, well, I'm coming right back. 
the 12th interception of the season thrown by Chad Kelly and Jaden Dalkey got a misconduct foul. The Riders for that last play. See Chad Kelly looking at the tablet and seeing that Coxie did have a step of separation. But when the DB and man flops underneath that and now is in a trail, you just can't underthrow it. And that's what Chad Kelly did. So they march off that penalty against Dolke, pushing the riders back into their zone. Back to about the 42 Saskatchewan. Nonetheless, this is a team needing to win and leading the Argos by 10 here in the second quarter at Mosaic, the final game of the season for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the regular season. They're hoping it's not their final game period. Midway through second quarter, faking the handoff. Adarius Pickett. He tried once and he tries again and ultimately does get the sack as he takes down Dola Gala. Yeah, that, that play for Dola Gala just, it was either a decision or just a little bit of sloppy execution, but you see Pickett figured it out and Dola Gala kind of lost the handle of the football, so he was just trying to recover. Not give it away, not give it right back to the Argos. They're actually making the tackle on a short running play of a gain of less than a yard. Second down and nine. Toss in the sweep. Bing, Jamal Peters. This is helmet comes off in a pile. Wynn McManus are in there as well as they finally do take Bain down, but not enough for a Saskatchewan first down. It's one of the reasons the Argos have been so good this year is, is when they've had challenges, and every team will in every game, no matter how good you are, you will have a mistake. And when you make a mistake or there's a challenge, the other unit will bail you out. And that's what Corey Mace's unit just did. Chad Kelly throws a pick. Doesn't turn into anything because the defense gets a two and up. And as a result, Corsak back at the 35 to punt it. Two returners back in addition to Leak. It's Deontay McMahon back for a two, but Leak picks it up inside the 10. That's a. Yeah, he is so dangerous. Ultimately taken down, but he's at four. Punt's return for touchdowns, including one against the Riders and touchdown Atlantic back in Halifax. How about front runners for player awards? Javon Leak is big time front runner for outstanding special teams player. Had a big game in Halifax when these two teams played. And over a thousand punt return yards for Javon Leak. I mean, it's one thing in kickoff returns to accumulate a thousand yards plus because you get that first 20 for free. But in punts, you don't. He's been averaging leading to see a dollar. a milestone as well wanted to get his thousand yards and he does needed 41 coming in AJ Olette well the big boys up front say they get the assist on the thousand yard season because boy they, they are blocked up I mean he's into the secondary forget the linebacking core Olette was into the secondary before he faced first contact on that run the Saskatchewan 43. Often dead out of a boy. In his second year out of Bryant. And he's had a lot of touches recently as the running backs have rested, like Olat, who did not play last week. AJ Olette now 45 yards, needed 41. He's over a thousand for the first time in his young career. And and when asked about it, he wasn't shy about it. The number meant a lot to him. He wanted to get there the fourth this season to rush for over a thousand yards. It's bobbled and it's picked up by Adam Baboya. Just takes it and how do you draw that one up? Well, you don't. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm going to look like I'm going to catch it. I'm going to bobble it. Then you take it. Yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. No, it was, it was actually the timing turns into what would be an, a, a real good draw play. Although there was some tense moments there for the Argos to not give it back to the riders on the turnover because it was bouncing around there, but the timing turned out good. Looked like a straight draw play. Gets him down to the 15 and back in the hands of Olet. Adding to his total. A little contact there with Deontay Williams. So they're going to have a word or two about it. Down around the 10. So let put his head down and Williams was ready to take him on. We've seen AJ, AJ Olette do this a ton and this is one of the reasons he's one of the top backs in the game and, and he's going to lower his pad level but I, I'm going to give full credit to Deontay Williams here for stepping up and, and putting his body in harm's way and taking that on because he's, he's not a tiny DB but Olette's that low. He's, he's coming after you. He's a train when he gets going. Second and five from the 10. End zone, no. Looking for Tommy Neal, who, if you're watching last week's game against the Red Blacks, had so many opportunities for touchdowns. One called back by penalty. Another chance they just missed clicking in the end zone. And Neal, another chance for his first touchdown of the season, but no. Yeah, he's mad at himself. Neal just, he, he's got to get his head around. He was he was reading coverage, but he took too long. He's got to speed read it and get the head around. And Chad Kelly will quickly remind his young receiver of that when they get back to the bench. So instead, Lozada from Mexico comes on for his first field goal try. He was an all-star in the Mexican Pro League and the leading scorer all time in that league in his CFL debut. Lozada with three. Back to a touchdown lead by the Riders. Late Kelly, the boys from Huddle Up stop by. And is Jim Barker still as fired up right now as he was before the game, JB? Of course! Woo! Whoa! Saturday afternoon, what let's the... go. <laughs> okay. Jim's always fired up. Doesn't always show it. Keeps a little quiet, and then, yeah, he's, he's all charged up for this. Looking forward to all of your comments coming up at the halftime. Blitz coming. Dolagala gets it away, completes it to Bain. They're arguing he bobbled it as he was heading out of bounds. And that ruling is a catch for Saskatchewan. They'll take a look, I'm sure. Protection there for Dolagala, because this is a blitz by the Argos defensively. A little juggle here. Did he get his feet in and control? You only need one. Yeah. They moved it up across midfield. They got the playoff. There was a catch. And it's Jared Stearns with his first catch for the Riders in the afternoon. And another first down. Quickly Saskatchewan coming back inside the Argo 40. You know, the one thing that jumps out at me in this first half is Jake Dolagala is playing very well. Very oh, tremendous confidence in a lot of these throws. Making the right reads, understanding coverage. The one pick aside, it's been maybe his best half. If you've been, I mean, he has one 400 yard game. But this first half that he's having at 290, Time two out. passing. Saskatchewan. Is, is territory, so the timeout called by the rider, that's territory that Dolagal has never been through close to 300 yards and a half. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the lead against the top team in the league and playing their starters and Chad Kelly and AJ Olette. So, yeah, I, I think it's been a big half, a couple of real good throws. That one that he learned from immediately to Emelis on the pick and goes back and hits him for a touchdown to Bain. So, you know, I I think it's been maybe one of his best halves in his nine starts. Got one start against the Argos here a year ago July. And then he went in relieved Mason Fine against the Argos in touchdown Atlantic. Went four for five for 100 yards and a touchdown in that loss. And then when Fine a couple of weeks later was injured in Montreal. Dola Gala has been the rider quarterback ever since. First and ten at the 38. Blitz coming. Gets rid of it. And a little too far for Picton with Peters on him. That's, that's the read I'm talking about, though. That's what I mean about seeing it and understanding it. 
he, he noticed blitz. He knew he couldn't block them all, so he had to get rid of it. And the accuracy wasn't there on the throw, but that happens sometimes in blitz, even with veteran quarterbacks, because they just don't have the time to really lock in the radar. And But he, he made the right read, the right decision, and threw it to a point where it couldn't get picked off. So the second down. Just over two minutes to go to halftime. It's been a good half for the Rockets. And again, they must win the legality. And intended for Bain went past him. Stiggers the closest to it. And incomplete it goes. So third down coming up. And Lother will come on to see if they can restore the 10 point lead. Yeah, it basically matched the field goal that the Argos just kicked. a two possession game with lots of football to be played in the second half. Horsack to put it down. The Argo 46 for Lotha. One for one. And does he tuck it in? No, he misses that one. Missed it to his right and Leak is bringing it up. Tries to tiptoe that sideline, but he does head out of bounds. Some milestones, personal ones in this game. Let's go down to Brent Dorn. Emelis did not think they'd be in the position to get a thousand yards this season. I talked to both of them this week. Bain told me, well, I was on a practice roster last year. Emelis, who's in his second CFL season, told me, I was just trying to get into the starting roster, the starting group here this year. And here they are past the thousand mark. Bain was a little upset when he had that interception happen earlier. Came up to me and said, I'm still going to get it. And sure enough, he did, guys. Yeah, some milestones achieved there by the Riders. More importantly, they need that win. It's in the hands of David Unger again. Up closer to the Argo 30. After the missed field goal try to keep it a seven point game, the Argo's down, still just down seven. Plenty of time here, though, for Chad Kelly to get into at least field goal range. Lock into DeVaris Daniels here, find the ladder defense. First and 10 at the 30, complete again. Short pass to Dejon Brissett. Up across the 35. 130. Yeah, as you say, still plenty of time, especially for an Argonaut offense that's run fewer plays than any team in the CFL, and yet they've been one of the top offenses all year. Well, they're scoring. They, they lead the league in, in average points per game, over 33 points on average. And with that previous pass, Chad oh. Kelly has gone over 4,000 yards, so yet another milestone we talked about coming in. Kelly, a 4,000-yard passer, came in fourth in passing yards in the Canadian Football League. Complete to Tommy Neal, cross midfield, 111 on the clock until halftime. He uh, carries his shoe back off. I'm going to get that thing back on. First and ten. Ryder 50. Big plays in offense in this. And that one could have been for Daniels, but he dropped it. Good timing on the hit. Just as the ball arrived to separate the ball from the receiver, DeVaris Daniels had sat, had not been in for the first few plays of this drive, and he was just substituted there for this seam row. Got in behind Larry Dean, and there's the hit, just making sure he can't hang on. But that was basically a drop by DeVaris Daniels, which you just do not see and haven't seen it this year. Took the hit from Deontay Williams and remains down getting attention. That catch, had he hung on to it, would have put him over 1,000 yards on the season. Something he has not done in his career, as we talked about earlier, but gets helped up and off in his own steam. So a minute to go, whether it's this half or the next, we'll get other shots, I'm sure, for that milestone. Get the wind knocked out of him. The Argos do have one more game. This is game 17 for them. They're in Ottawa to face the Red Blacks again to close it out in the final game of the regular season. 
TV place in the nation's capital. That's next Saturday. Deep low, right side, wide open. Touchdown, DeMonte Coxey. We talked about how they do thrive in the big play themselves, and they can strike quickly. Well, that's why, you know, when you talk about not having the, the highest average of plays per game on offense, doesn't necessarily mean you're not an explosive offense because you make a lot of these big plays. So one play covers 50 yards rather than 10 plays to cover the same distance. And that's what the Argos have been. They can, they can make you pay. I mean... So now Lozada on it. Under and putting it down. And that one sails right. Missed that one. For the rookie kicker, just under a minute to go. So it stays a 17-16 ball game as halftime gets closer. And Chad Kelly. Drive that produced 4,000 yards. DeMonte Coxey out there at the wide out position, and just watch. This is the riddle that is Nick Marshall right here. Nick Marshall gets caught peeking into the backfield and lets his guy sneak behind him, and Chad Kelly just rifles it to Coxey. Nick Marshall has an interception in this game by doing the very same thing. And watch the pressure that Chad Kelly had to deal with. It's going to be Micah Johnson who will stack and then come around here. And he gets the hit on Kelly, who doesn't see his receiver make the catch until after he's in the end zone and then hands up. But that is Nick Marshall in a nutshell. One time he can do that, get away with it, and come up with the pick. And the very next play, the receiver's in behind him. And it's a touchdown for the visiting team. And for all the good that's happened to Saskatchewan in this first half, their lead is down to a single point. The Argos strike fast, get into the end zone under a minute to go. Six-play drive over 80 yards. And here's Mario Alford, who used to play for the Argos back in 2018 before he was let go and moved on to Montreal. And then later, the Rough Riders last year. to do as a road team no matter where you are but certainly here keep it within one possession keep it within a field goal is even better and and keep that that distance even if you're behind but it's one possession behind right to the fourth quarter so they've got to be happy especially after that big deep ball to coax it and for the riders yeah they have the lead the big test second half is hanging on to it assuming they do have it still, 48 seconds to go at halftime. They had it against Calgary and could not hang on the way that second half played out. And Greg Dickinson had talked about that, Glenn. That, you know, in, in some of these games, those close games, it's three or four plays that just have just gone against them. Mistakes they've made that have really been costly. One job, one job. I think right now the panel's probably rewriting some script here, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been on that side before. <laughs> script can change. And that is bobbled and oh, almost intercepted. It was for Sean Bain, got bobbled up in a Darius Pickett. Close to the pick. Take a look, yeah, Bain. Just again, he got his eyes up a little bit late. Ball bounces off his arms, and now it's a free for all. Pick it almost. And if he gets that, he's in field goal range automatically. And Darius Pickett, not quite. Javon Lee back. Because Adam Corsack will look to punt this one away. Just outside is 10. Half a minute to go till halftime. This time, it's Deontay McMahon on the return. Gets it up across the 45. 16 seconds on the clock as Chad Kelly comes back out again. And Do we see him in the second half? Yeah, well, from the, the, the games that I've seen, especially last week, 
And with them trailing, I would say yes. <laughs> I would I would guess. That's risky, man. That well, is so you know risky. We, we've gone through this exercise for a few weeks now, wondering how much more he'll play. And every time we think, okay, that's it, he keeps coming out again. I mean, and, and the score, I think, is a big deal here. I mean, they want to be, it happened that time against Ottawa when they got up comfortably last week. Then he came out midway through the fourth quarter. No, I've been guessing wrong throughout all this <laughs> as to how much Chad Kelly's going to play. Tavares Daniels well, across midfield. I, I bring it up because it was an interesting decision by Rick Campbell last night when he pulled VA Vernon Adams out of the game when he was still healthy and fine in the game. Was, this was at halftime. And I think it was a good decision for a lot of reasons. Tommy Neal catches that one off the shoe tops and gets another first down. By the way, the previous one to Tavares Daniels does officially put him over a thousand. That pretty much checks all those boxes for individual accomplishments and in, in yardage. I just want to see how Chad Kelly got hit on this play. This is the risk I'm talking about. He yep. got up kind of like looking like I think it was his non-throwing arm, his left arm, but he got up like he looked like he was a little sore walking back towards the bench as they bring out the field goal team. Let's see how he goes and, down. And this is the risk I'm talking about. You're right, and that's gonna, that has been the ongoing discussion. Um, what happens if? I mean, perish the thought for the Argos, but you know they're holding their breath, I'm sure, when they see scenarios like this. I don't know if he hit his, his elbow or was it might have been his right arm that he was on the sideline. Apparently, they looked at his right elbow. It looks like he's okay now, but... I'm just going to say for the record, if I'm on the sideline, Chad Kelly is not playing in the second half. You're, you, uh, that, I, that's it. Chad, you're saying, Chad, you're done. And right? I'm not and I'm not conceding anything by doing that. If Ryan Dinwiddie decides to do that, he's not conceding the game. He's got just as much. He's got confidence in his backup, and he wants Cameron Dukes to get the just-in-case reps that are important as well. But I, I just now Kelly does look fine now. We're just as I say the even, scenario, even, though. even the personal accolades, even yeah. the thousand yard things. I, at the end of the day, it's about a championship. Here's Lozada to try a longer field goal from 42. Nope. And that one is heading wide right again. As Alford. And it out, just gets it out. Keep some points off the board, still running around, trying to make sure there are zeros on the clock. And there are. So an interesting first half is, yeah, Kelly looks fine as he trots off, and the Argos closed to within a point. But an explosive first half on both sides. Certainly saw that from Saskatchewan. And a good first half for Jake Dolagala. And but looks like he's ready to go for the second half, coming on again with the Argos getting the football to start the second half and trailing by a point. Javon Lee, one of two back along with Deontay McMahon there for the return from Brett Lockett. Can the Riders hang on and stay alive in this final game at Mosaic 2023? Showing reverse, but they fake it, and Lee keeps it and goes to the right. Little hop step as Murray Henderson strings him out and does a good job in special teams to push him out of bounds as Chad Kelly is indeed coming on for the second half. Well, through an interception in that first half, but made some great throws. I mean, Tavares Daniels early on in the first quarter was his number one target as he's been most of the year and got Coxie on a deep ball as well. Pretty good half. Again, I I really believe it's a little risky to keep him in this game. But he'll go in the start the second half. Down a point to start. Third quarter handing off A.J. Lett. Excuse me, Daniel out of a boy. Daniel Adebaboye out of bounds. So mentioning Olet's name after getting that milestone, he's just staring and watching his teammate bust off a big run. Ryan Hunter, the left guard, gets to the second level, and that's key because that's Larry Dean. 62 gets up there on the second level right here. Larry Dean gets cut off, big block outside, and Adebaboye gone. 
to start the second half. You can play anyone at quarterback if that's going to happen. That's what your offense is going to look like. Adam Aboye came into the game with 170 yards rushing. He got 59 in that one run alone, and there's an Attaboy from A.J. Olette. Big smile for Daniel Attaboye in his second year at a Bryant, a Toronto kid. Back playing for his hometown Argos. There's Andrew Harris, a guy that knows a thing or two about busting off a big run. He's been on the six game injured list. And with Harris out and now resting Olat, an opportunity for Daniel out of a boy to show what he can do. You know what I, I just love about Adam Aboye is that was the nominee last year for outstanding special teams player. Like there's a guy that has been on the teams, biding his time, getting ready for his opportunity, and see the teammates appreciate the great speed off the left side of that old line that opened up a massive hole. He takes a break. Deontay McMahon is the running back. Tommy Neal in motion. It's a toss to McMahon, right side inside the 30, then the 25 before he's taken down there by Deontay Williams. Second big hit of this game for number 24 for the Riders. Stepping up and run support that time. Last time it was A.J. Olette, a smaller back, but same type of collision. McMahon weighing in at 185. He made his debut. That's a, that's a hit. Just a few weeks ago in Montreal. Throwing second down, complete for a first. Deja Brissett climbed the ladder and came down with it. Beautiful catch by Brissett to keep this drive going. Yeah, these ones take courage. This this is where Brissett, he knows what's going to happen. He, he puts his hand up to suggest he's read the zone correctly. There should be a, a hole in the zone right here. Chad Kelly sees it, but the ball a little high. And one thing Brissett knows there is he's going to get hit. Dalkey comes inside out, goes up and gets it. Ball is down to the rider 15. The Argos have not led in this game. They trail by one. It's handed off. And a short carry on that first down out of a boy, the ball carrier again. The Boris Daniels, we thought he was over a thousand receiving, and then at the half there was an adjustment on stats, a correction that puts him a yard shy. So he's at 9.99 in receiving yards coming into the second half. Second and eight. Kelly facing heat, dumps it off too far for out of the boy. And the field goal unit will be coming on the field to see if they can give the Argos their first lead of this game. Yeah, Chad Kelly looked for Devaris Daniels. That was his first read. And whether that was the read or not, this is the other sort of catch-22 for these personal goals of 1,000-yard seasons. If it starts to change the way you're playing the game because you're trying to get the ball to Devaris Daniels and not just reading the defense and going through your progressions as per normal, you're going to learn some bad habits. Alfredo Lozada is the kicker, filling in for Boris Beattie today from 21. He's one for two on the day. He pushes that one to the right as well, but it does get through. So he does get his second field goal in this CFL debut for the Mexican kicker who has given the Argos the lead. So Jake Dolagala, great first half, but the pressure is on as the Riders trail awaiting. After six straight losses, they keep their spirits up, don't they? Needing it badly today, and now trailing for the first time in this game, the Riders with the ball in the hands, left side of Jamal Morrow. Well, coach wanted it badly, didn't he, in the panel? I mean, he was saying, come on, Saskatchewan, almost cheering for them. Run the football. Run the football a little bit more. So on first down in the first series of the second half, there you go. Morrow off the left side for a few. They've certainly thrown the football. Dola Gala, 292 in the first half. Bain, 90 yards. Emelis, 99 yards. Schaefer Baker, 73 yards. Dola Gala to throw here. And that is complete to Emelis. 
Davis. Uh, standing first half. That puts him over 100, of course, for this game so far as he pushes it up close to the 50 in a first down. That'll be short yardage situation for Saskatchewan. And bring in Antonio Pimkin. Just shy, just inches to go. They're 30 of 38 on the season. More attempts and short yardage than any other team on third and short. Failed eight times this year. Needs inches and has that and then a few inches to spare up across the 50 to keep this one going as Dola Gala will come back on the field for Pipkin. That hesitation almost got him in trouble though, didn't it? It was a little bit of hesitation on the snap. And I believe it was Winton McManus who got him right in the hole. So he got the first down, but watch the hesitation here. Just, he gets the ball and then a second there, just that half step. Look at McManus over the top. He got it, but not by much. He's had a great year for that Argo defense, Win McManus. Saskatchewan 51 now, first and 10, throwing again, completing again. Emelis again and inside the Argo 50. That's a couple of those from Emelis in a row here, and the progression that Jake Dolagala could get into as they go into short yardage one more time here. Emelis got it close to the sticks, but the next the next play they could do is sort of the slant and go, and have Emelis run that same sort of route, but take three, four steps inside and then just hit it up the field. Try and get one of the Argo DBs to bite. Two for Baker. For a while they're running under center now. You got Pipkin in there. Another short yardage. He moves it to the right this time and Another first down, so out goes Pipkin, on comes Dola Gala. As you look at his numbers now, over 300 yards passing, 15 to 23, easily on pace for his best start as a rough rider. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, when you look at the numbers and the pace, yeah, for sure, but again, the he had over 400 yards passing. True enough, yeah, a few weeks ago against the Lions. Yeah, against the Lions, did not get that win. Yeah, the, the yardage doesn't matter, the W does this stage of the game especially. And the Toronto 48 complete again to Bain. Down closer to the 40, so be second and short. Not as short as that last second down, but still a few yards shy of keeping it going. Two to go. Jamal Morrow has been solid in protection. That time, Darius Pickett came off the edge on a, on a flat blitz and hits Dola Gala in stride before he throws the ball, if not for Jamal Morrow, who's been solid in pass protection here this afternoon. So a couple of yards shy, but it is Pipkin still coming in on the second down and short. We need two full yards and two downs to get there. Only need one. You've got more. Down to the 30 before he's taken down on the big first down. And flags come out late. Royce Mechie had something going on with Emelis. With a late push. Flags coming out after the play was blown dead. Big wing set here, and he just got outside and trying to pick his holes. He Major foul, misconduct, 15 yards, Toronto number nine. 15-yard penalty, first down. Now Mechie was a, a little overzealous, I guess, with Pipkin throwing him to the ground, and then Amelis gave him a little bump. Not a big deal. Moves the ball down to the Argo 15. There's a guy that plays a safety position and is in their top three in tackles on the season. Go look out. Setting up a screen to Moore. And then he breaks loose, picks up a few more yards. He gets it down just inside the 10. Close to another first down. Another second and short coming up here for the Riders. Little little reward for Jamal Morrow. I you know I've I've noticed away from the play a few times where he has been just excellent in pass protection. So Kelly Jeffrey goes for uh, give him the ball, give, give him a chance, give him a little reward, and he makes a couple miss at the line of scrimmage and some heavy lifting on his own there to get five or six. 
Second and four, just inside the Argo 10. For the fake. Quick hitter there to Kean Schaefer Baker. Inside the five, it'll be a first and goal for Saskatchewan. Quick read, pre snap read for Dolagala to see the defense. Usually get man, and if there's one receiver that has not got a guy up and press in his face, that's the hot route. And Schaefer Baker turns around, uses his hands to catch it. I know that sounds like, well, of course, receivers use their hands. Sometimes they'll let it hit their bodies to catch it. Not, not Schaefer Baker. Technique was excellent. It's a down to the two. Oh, the Riders stay it so many times. They need this. They need this win. And if they get this win, then they need Winnipeg to beat Calgary next week in order to make the playoffs. But first things first. Looking to find the end zone and take that lead back. Get in from the two. He looks to get about half of it. He'll have to fight his way down to the one. And we'll have a second down and goal coming up. Well, you can do that three times. You get first and goal from the two, and now it's on the one. So you got you know, leave him right in there. Antonio Pipkin. Moving up under center. Second and goal. Again. To break the play. And a touchdown. And the Riders have taken the lead back. You know, sometimes on these short yardage plays, it's, it's all about low pad level and push. Sometimes for the ball carry, it's about getting skinny. Get, get skinny in the hole and try to just slice your way through a little gap and look like Antonio Pipkin did just that, crossing the plane with Wynn McManus trying to push him the other way. Watch, watch him come off the left side and just turn his shoulders, try to get skinny in there. And keep driving. Keep driving. There it is, ball across the point. And a busy drive for Antonio Pipkin with so many short yardage plays, and that is touchdown number five for him in this season. Season that started on the depth chart of the Hamilton Tiger Cats before being dealt away. Of course, with BC before in Montreal, too. You know, when I, early in the season we talked about should the starting quarterback take short yardage? See, see Pipkin right there? He's, he's played three or four plays in this game. <laughs> he's beat up doing short yardage. That's why I'm always for the backup or a particular quarterback. Some I mean, it could be your third guy to be your short yardage quarterback. And as we've seen with a number of quarterbacks in the CFL, a role that he's embraced very nicely. He's done a good job with it. But yeah, if you're in that role, you're taking hits, aren't you? So with a four-point game, after that Pipkin touchdown. They'll be going for two to see if they can make it six. No surprise they're going for two. Just take the point and con convert the touchdown on field goal game. There we go. The flag is out and looking to the end zone. And that is caught by Schaefer Baker. So we'll see what happens with the flag. So the flag is and they're still talking about whether it was in bounds or out. So well, it is pending the flag. Two points for Saskatchewan. The rule that is a catch for Schaefer Baker at a touchdown earlier in this game. The previous play is under review by the command center. We do have a penalty for no end on Saskatchewan. We're just waiting for the review. Just waiting for the review because if they decide it's no catch, then the Argos can decline the penalty. It wouldn't matter. 
Uh, he went out of bounds. The question was, did he get pushed out or did he go out on his own? If he went out on his own, he can't come back in and, and make that catch. So he becomes an illegal participant if he, when he went out, we saw both feet on the white stripe from the other angle. The question was, was he pushed out? That's Mason Pierce, the DB that right at, the, right, right at the top of your screen here. And oh, that's going to be tough. They had conferred and ruled it was a catch. And remember, the penalty is against Saskatchewan. Just trying to determine if they need to replay the down or if it's just going to be no two points. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I know they were fighting you. They were hand fighting between the two players, but I'm not sure. I don't think Pierce pushed him out. See, they, they have a no end. The best case scenario for the riders is, is that they it, get counts. Another... it counts and they have to take the penalty and then they get, and another, then they shot. get another chance at it. Exactly. Let's find out. Tom Valesi. Sometimes they like to keep us in suspense for that extra pause. Here it comes. After review by the command center, it's an incomplete pass. Procedure, no end on Saskatchewan will be declined. The convert is no good and over. So there you go, they went for it, they didn't get it. That's the bottom line. So they get six points on that scoring drive. No two for Key and Schaefer Baker. And it's a four point game. The Riders back in the lead at 23-19. Schaefer Baker still discussing it and why that didn't count as a catch. That's the correct call. They got it right. Riders back in front. And, and uh, it's a curious scenario for the Riders. They want the win today. Obviously, they need it. For Rider fans, they would have to cheer for Winnipeg next week. Javon Lee. And I, which, which wouldn't be all that easy for a Ryder fan, but under these circumstances, Chad Kelly still in the game. Argos trailing by four. Gala, he's reading the defense well, seeing it well. A couple short yardage plays by Pipkin. And then Craig Dickinson went for two, and I said, you know, it's a little surprising. The only reason I said that is because I, I think there's a momentum factor when you get the full major and you convert it with seven. Chad Kelly sound for Chad Kelly back up but just to finish that thought with Craig Dickinson but I do understand I mean it's it goes from you know a, a four point lead to a six point lead so two field goals I just when you're in the third quarter you're chasing points in the third quarter with a whole quarter to play still so you can kick that around depending on the outcome of this one <laughs> later but ends up they didn't get it it's a four point game A.J. Olette hit his thousand yard milestone rushing and is sitting here in the second half. Yeah, and DeVaris Daniels. Illegal block, hands to the face, Toronto number 52. Ten yard penalty, will repeat first down. Got the right card, Peter Nicastro, the hands to the face call. Going against Micah Johnson. Side and he gets I, I didn't see a penalty there, so well, nonetheless the first and twenty now and Kelly standing in. Throws it deep. And he had Daniels just a bit too far. Daniels was open, but it falls incomplete. In the second and twenty now. As uh, that, Kelly looks a little hobbled. That's what I'm talking about. And that's as I say, it's another one of those hold your breath moments within in this game. And 
trying to sort things out and stay in the huddle. Well, he doesn't have the protection going back to this play because he, he doesn't have the protection of the pocket any longer. He becomes a runner here and a defender like Lanier can't determine whether or not he's running or has the ball, but you can see that little twist at the end that Chad Kelly didn't like, the officials didn't see. Seems fine, second and 20. And dumps it off for Adam Boy. A one-headed catch brings it down. He spins across the 40. And getting back near the original line of scrimmage is Toronto's going to have to punt it away. Yeah, they're going to get Chad Kelly out of this game. And there is Cameron Dukes there. There you go. Number two in the depth. He's limping off. And you'd have to think, after seeing that, Ryan Dinwiddie would say, your day is done. We shall see. But... That's not a scenario we saw last week against Ottawa. His health was fine as he puts the helmet down, but they have to think ahead to that Eastern final, November the 11th. Trailing in this game by four. And nearly for the Riders, getting close to Haggerty on that punt. He gets a good one. And Alford at the 10. And out of bounds, shy of the 20. Kelly in a bit of discomfort. Argos down 23-19 third quarter. It's all for nothing. Our main goal is still out there. And Brett, that's what Ryan did when he has been dealing with for exactly. the final third of the season. That was unprecedented to have six games to go that don't matter in the standings, but obviously do to make sure that this team is ready. He couldn't just rest everyone spinning off on that carry is Jamal Morrow. And he knows that too. He just can't go and rest all his star players for six games. He's had to manage it when they're going to play. But that question with Chad Kelly has certainly come up a few times. Yeah, no, you know, and uh, I mean, if he's out there, he's in harm's way. And I understand the challenge. Uh, like I said, to, to go ahead and let him go through his process as a starter through the week and then start him and play a quarter or a couple series I get it no problem I, I, I think there's especially in where he is in his career he's so new it's his first year really as a starter let's come and go Gala gets it away and he completes it too into the hands of Kean Schaefer Baker and a first down for the Riders a rider team that is hungry trying to stay alive sure but I just you know it's it's like when Rick Campbell last night with the Lions still with a chance to take first place in the division and have the bye he took Vernon Adams, who he realized was going to be in a dogfight where they're playing against a desperate team against Calgary, and he said that just it's too risky. We're in the playoffs. We've got a home playoff game. They know that, and it's going to be the semifinal because the Bombers finished first. Sending pressure again and with a hand in his face, Dola Gala barely gets rid of that one, and it falls incomplete. And the final thought, though, again, you know, the, I love the debate, and the panel's gone through it, and, you know, I know it's happening in bars across the country. You play, do not play them. You got to keep playing to win. You don't want to get into bad habits. It's not conceding anything to play a guy that's on your roster that's not your starter. Cameron Dukes needs reps. It's important, and that doesn't mean you're waving the white flag because you're putting them out there. You're just saying, guys, play as hard as you would if Chad Kelly was in there, but we're protecting our franchise player. Second and ten at the 31. Great catch. Complete over the middle. Dola Gala finds Sean Bain. Another first down for Saskatchewan in the Argo zone. Well, that's a great throw by Dola Gala. I mean, he's 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 deep in the pocket on this one. He, he's got some pressure in his face. Free man going right through the B gap, and he has to elevate the ball over Jordan Williams and drop it into Bain. Maybe his best throw of the season. Pick up a 29 more yards as Sean Bain goes over 100 yards for the game. Already gone over 1,000 for the season. 23-19 Saskatchewan. Looking for more. Needing to win to keep slim playoff hopes alive. Another blitz coming, and they got him. Coming in off the edge was Mason Pierce. And had a beeline for Dola Gala to throw them down late in the third quarter for a big loss. Jamal Morrow was not in the game in the backfield. It was a backup, Houdon, and this is where the blitz is coming from, and Morrow has done a good job all game long of picking up that blitz, but on the play action, Houdon looks the backside. Another guy coming off the edge there, Jamal Peters, 
Just didn't have enough to block them all. Final play, third quarter. Ryder football on a second and 18 now. Just a three-man rush as they drop back and completed and popped up. Witten McManus has the recovery. And a big return for the Argos. Down to the 30. And in just one play, when Saskatchewan's thinking of driving and adding to the lead, the Argos are already in scoring position now after the fumble recovery by Winton McManus. Dolagala is forced to make the tackle. Does he have the catch? Oh, it looks like the enough time would pass there. It looked like you turn. So that's a fumble. Jared Stearns, the receiver, and punched out by Tavares McFadden and picked up by Winton McManus. Argo ball to start the fourth quarter in the rider zone down four. It's obvious they have to win, and it's a fragile for a four-point lead after a turnover. The concern for the Argos, Glenn, is the health of their number one quarterback, Chad Kelly, who is appeared to be benched now in favor of Cameron Dukes. Yeah, he didn't look too bad. I didn't see a whole lot of doctors around him, but he, he did get that knee twisted. Cameron Dukes looks like he's going to finish the game. You know, again, continue the conversation. To me, Chad Kelly was on the field playing this game for two quarters and two series too long. Meaning, okay, if you're going to start him for a couple of series, I get that. He was not happy. He thought that hit by Lanier was late. And he was talking to him after it. But he doesn't look like he's too badly hurt. He didn't have the medical staff around him. So here comes Cameron Dukes completing his first pass to DeMonte Coxey. Right down around the 25. And some activity there before he finally goes down. Cameron Dukes got a start a few weeks ago in Winnipeg. And in that game against the Bombers, he went 17 to 24 for 321, a touchdown pass. No interceptions in that one as you look at his numbers overall. Yeah, and, and valuable reps that if if knock on wood, you're in a in the Eastern final and you need him to play a series or two. More experience. Second and six. Little pump there. And a look to the end zone. And too far. Closest there for Maine Washington of the Riders. Got his hand on it. So just a couple of plays after the turnover to get them down in scoring range. And a field goal try coming up here to see if they can get back within a point. But yeah, that is the flip side of the Argos quarterback situation. Keep Chad Kelly healthy, but also give your backups as much experience as you can. Yeah, exactly. You know, A.J. Olette, we haven't seen. We've seen Adam Boye come in for him. He got his 1,000 yards, and he is going to watch probably the rest of this game. And, you know, Michael O'Shea has to do the same. Head coach of the Bombers has to do the same thing later this afternoon. Make those decisions. Lozada with the try, and he puts it through in his first CFL game in relief of Boris Beattie. He's now gone three for four in the field goal. And the Rough Riders, you look at the standings, Winnipeg first, BC second, who gets third? The Stampeders have the tiebreaker. They play against Winnipeg next week. First, Saskatchewan needs to win this game. Win this game, and then they'll watch to see if Calgary wins that final game of the regular season against the Bombers. They have no control over that, but they do this. 13-41, fourth quarter. Jake Dolegal with a one-point lead again. Samuel Emelis has had a great game. He's pushed out of bounds after picking up the right of first down. So the hot hands have been Emelis. You've seen Bain make some plays, you know, early on in the first quarter. Sean Bain had a couple of nice bubble screens that he took for big yards after the catch. Again, been a hot hand to get it out there to Emelis as well. And I don't think you forget Jamal Morrow hasn't, he should have fresh legs. From the Ryder 51, first down, off to the left and too high for Bain. Incomplete. And a big second down is coming up for Saskatchewan. And you see Jake Dolagala that pointed himself there just as accurate as he's been and he's been he's been on tonight today but just missed on that throw now that doesn't mean that discussion in a one-point game that doesn't mean you you start as a coach making real radical like going on third down no matter what decisions pressure 
pressure coming that got him. Flag coming out late, though, as he's taken down. Yeah, by the way, the timing of that flag, it looked like it was part of the hit on Dola Gallo. Is that Sean Oakman that got there first? It looked like a team meeting, or at least a D-line meeting. Maybe a face mask? The waiting word from the referee, Tom Major Belezzi. foul, roughing the passer. Toronto number two, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, you're right, it was Sean Oakman, the one that got in there and called for roughing the passer, so by penalty, a big first down in Saskatchewan. Down in that three-point stance at the edge here, and he gets up the field. He's going to cut underneath this block. I think it's just a hit to the head. He brings the left arm right up into the face mask, face area. And I'm not sure he grabbed the face mask, but can't hit the quarterback in the head either. Two of the tallest players, by the way, in the CFL. Oakman, the tallest at 6'9". Tallest quarterback, Dola Gala, at 6'7". Crouching down, though, and hit in the head. The penalty is drawn. It's first and 10 at the 44 Toronto. Deep look, right coverage is there. It looked like it was a chance for Tavares McFadden who got turned around on it. He was the one with the best shot at catching that football in the Argo end zone. Well, the intended target was Schaefer Baker, and let's take a look at the route because it looked like there was just a communication gap. It was a deep throw, and Baker kind of looks like he was supposed to sit down down the field there and then realizes the ball is deeper than that, and McFadden has the best chance at it, but can't make the catch at the warning track. Back close to the pick, but no, and another chance rider, second and ten. Argo 44, one-point lead to the right and caught down near the 40 for Bain on that second down play. Yeah, so. and that's what I mean. Just, like, keep with conventional wisdom if you're Saskatchewan and Craig Dickinson here and manage this game like you would any other game. I think it, at times in, in Calgary last week, Craig Dickinson actually went outside of that box and started making decisions that came back to haunt him. Brett Lother, one for two on the game. 47-yarder, heading right the three, tucks it in. Lother, three more big points on the board for Dickinson and the Riders. They have another four-point lead, 11.32 to go in the fourth quarter. Offense has had, they've burned the right for a little moment of chill and a little practice for the, what, the touchdown celebrations? Well, you have to work at this stuff. You, you can't, it just don't, doesn't happen. You just don't score a touchdown and then do it. You got to practice it. And then once you practice it and you do get a touchdown, you get back out there and now it looks sharp. Now you're, now you're two-stepping. Those well-orchestrated celebrations, they're not just random. A lot of practice goes into that. Like moment of chill and Devontae Coetzee with that second quarter touchdown. You've got to have fun playing the game, even if it's your job. Argos trailing by four. Cameron Dukes is the Toronto quarterback, and they've got him. Brian Cox coming in. He forced a big fumble in the first half on Chad Kelly, and Cox comes in and gets the sack on Duke, so a second and long coming up. So well played by Brian Cox here. He's got to come down inside to kind of seal the edge here and then bounce back and get the right angle to cut off Dukes so he can't get outside. See how he hops inside, closes the edge down, and then gets the right angle to make sure if he get, does get inside, it's where his help is. To the 36 and the second and 14 for Cameron Dukes. But not nearly enough past the original line of scrimmage. So just across the 40 and a two and out for the Argos. The Riders leading by four, about to get the ball back. Not surprised. Larry Dean steps up. Game on the line, season on the line. Let's let's say it like it is. Because Saskatchewan loses, they're done. And we already know where the Argos are gonna finish. They have one regular season game left next week in Ottawa, and then they get ready for the Eastern Final. Mario Alford across the 30 in the 35, so Ryder football, four-point lead, 10.05 and counting on the clock here in the fourth quarter at Mosaic, looking to hang on with Jake Dolagala at quarterback and see if they can at least set up some drama for next week in Calgary, even though their regular season will be done. 
See, these are good numbers, right? And, you know, you want that one, you want that interception back, obviously, if you're Dola Gallo, but those are good numbers. And, but I, to Coach La Police's point at halftime, this is where you want your running game. This is Timer, exactly the moment. Timer, the clock to 10.06. Thank you. You have the lead by four, but if you score a major on this drive, you make it a two-possession game and take a stranglehold on it. It's not done yet, but it takes a real stranglehold on it, and you can do that with success on first down with the run, and you're grinding the clock at the same time, and that's one of the reasons that the former coaches are talking about that balance always. But throwing again across the 40 complete two to Sean Bain. Yeah, Morrow, the leading rusher with only 21 yards on seven carries so far in this game. But the receivers, as we've talked about, have been lighting it up. And that's where they've been dining it out on offense so far. And, and let's give some respect to the Argo defense that leads the league in, in run defense. Right. Number one team in the league. So that's probably one of the reasons Kelly Jeffrey has decided to go more to the pass. Second and five after that five-yard pickup by Bain. They come. Pressure coming, gets rid of it. No, in and out of the hands of Bain there. The coverage there for the Argos, Thomas Costig and Jamal Peters in there. Third and five coming up. And with that four-point lead, they'll have to punt it away. This is the hot route. Full blitz coming from Corey Mace's group. Hot route, turn, and you got to hang on to that. You're going to get hit anyway. He's had a great game, and that one got away. They can't throw it. It was on time. It was in the right spot. Jamal Peters with a good hit. Good time. Adam Corsak to punt to do Javon Leak. Turning down to about nine minutes in this fourth quarter. He breaks it back to the left. Runs into his own man. And that was Jack Kassar, and ultimately he is taken down across the 35. Back comes Cameron Dukes. Argo for the Argos in relief of Chad Kelly. Toronto lost only twice this year. They're trailing in this game. As Kelly gets flushed out and takes off and he slides down up across the 45 to second set up a, a second and short now for the Argos. A pretty good look at, at Cameron Dukes and his ability to, to escape run and make a good decision to hook slide. And yes, he's half a yard short, but. They whistle it down before they get it off. To the stand of the coach's challenge by Ryan Dinwiddie. Toronto is challenging that there was roughing the passer on the play. We'll review the play. Gave himself out by taking the slide as you talk about, and they feel the hit was a penalty by the riders as he was sliding. You know, I, I it's a surprise that Ryan did when he would. I, I'm wondering if that challenge had a little bit to do with the hit on Chad Kelly too. <laughs> Just make a point that. This watch a guy that was Pete Robinson over the top. I, the, the timing on the hook slide. The reason I say this because Cameron Dukes waited till the last second, so that that takes a little bit of his protection away from him. If he slides now, and then that hit comes, now is the forearm going to the head, and that's maybe what Dinwiddie is looking at. But I don't. I don't think that warrants a penalty. <laughs> they were lining up for second and long, or second and short before the uh, challenge. Here's the time. result of that challenge. After review from the command center, the ruling on the field stands. It'll be second down. So no roughing the passer, and Toronto loses a timeout as well. It is second and short for, for the, the timer. Please reset the clock to 8:26. I, I just, was also charged the timeout. I, I'm sure it wasn't, but it just feels like Chad Kelly, that was a little late on the twist when he got pulled down, and I'm sure Ryan didn't really wasn't happy with that. Daniel out of the boy, first down and a lot more. Taken down there by A.J. Allen, but up at midfield, and a first down for Toronto. Pretty big hit by, by Jaden Dalkey to... to or else this is an even bigger game. Adam Boye following the blocks of his guys up front. Passing, completing it too. Devaris Daniels with the catch. He's driven back, but we can safely say now he just needed a yard. We thought he had it earlier, but 
was taken away and uh, as they corrected the stat so that one does put him over for the first time in his career over a thousand yards receiving. Second and five after the Daniels catch. And off to the left and back to back Daniels. So he gets his thousand for the season and gets some more there for a first down. So we talked about all the milestones coming into this game. Personal milestones in a big team game and check them off. A.J. Olette got to 1,000 rushing. There's his first 1,000-yard season. Young court receivers with their 1,000-yard season with Sean Bain and Samuel Emelis. Just one missing. And Jamal Morrill, it's not his fault. It's 93. Just hasn't had many touches. We'll tell you what, if he does get it today in the last day, then I'm liking the Riders' chances of winning this game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> With 93 still to go and half of a quarter left. You know, but uh, I'm happy for DeVaris Daniels. I mean, the, to have the career he's had, and we showed you the board, but just how successful the teams that he's been part of have been. And, you know, it's... Uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting board and in the, in the ultimate team game one player is important but not you know and so I don't want to get too far into that but that's that takes him over the top of over a thousand and that's little little bonus. The Barnes Daniels was a rookie with the Stampeders in 2016 when they had a chance for the best season ever and they rested boldly by Mitchell they didn't get it now they ended up losing to Ottawa in the great cup set by the Red Blocks that year and what was a terrific Stampeder season but the point he made is regular season accomplishments are terrific but unless you win it all and he finally did with the Stamps two years later in 2018 but he talked about that that this is nice but you gotta win the biggest games of all too. Yeah yeah and, and that's when we showed you the board on the 15 wins that the Argos are trying to get to or maybe even 16 like the Edmonton team in 89 they didn't win either. From the right of 45, a second and 11. And that's complete to Coxie, who's out of bounds. Tremaine Washington there. So, another completion for Cameron Dukes as the Zargo drive continues. Outside receiver there, nice timing run. Flags coming out. Plays whistle dead on the handoff to Adam Boboye. Procedure, Toronto number 63. Five yard penalty, remains first down. Calling it on the right tackle, Trevon Tate. Well. All right, our season in the balance here. Chance to maintain hope, but they need to stop. First and 15, Saskatchewan 36. Cameron Dukes over to Adam Aboye. Larry Dean chasing him. They can't get him. He's still on his feet. He hurdles and gets down close to a first down. Trying to hurdle right over the top of Deontay Williams is Adam Aboye. Just great lower body strength for Adam Aboye here because he's getting tracked down quickly by Larry Dean. Number 11, and Dean gets kind of cut off on the way to it by Micah Tights, and then that's the hit. Another one by Williams. Out of shotgun still on second and short, and handing off. That's Deontay McMahon on the carry as he gets it inside the 20, and another first down for Toronto. McMahon in his second year out of McNeese State. But a month ago in the game that the Argos clinched first in the East, that's when McMahon made his debut, and he's made an impression. The opportunity with Andrew Harris injured and out, and with them resting, A.J. Olette. So a big moment here for the Ryder D. Williams coming in, but that is caught again just outside the 15. Richie Sandani, his second catch as an Argo. This is his second game as an Argo after being let go by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Maybe the most important four yards of the Ryder season on defense here. Here we go. Second and four. Argo's pressing to take the lead back. Dukes, he has time. Has protection. He gets away. Throws on the move and throws it out of bounds. And the Ryder D 
Hayes stands firm as the field goal unit will come on for Toronto. Braden Thomas, who's getting the chance to get in the rotation, he's number 98. He's going to end up getting to Dukes as he rolls out to his right. And but, but, boy, did he ever have to dig to get there. He just says digging, 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 diving to force the throw out of bounds. Well, I said field goal unit to come on. It's not. It's third and five, and the Argos are going for it. Call it third and four, the rider 14. What a big moment this is. Dukes, Toronto's offense, three-man rush. Pressure. And it's caught by McMahon on an underhand throw, but not nearly enough as Toronto turns it over on downs. I'm not sure why Ryan didn't he would make that decision. First down to Saskatchewan. Based on where it could have been caught, it still wouldn't matter. It's still a turnover on downs. This is a Canadian football league. There's 419 left. And he's not happy with the decision Cameron Dukes made there, but I, I think you take the points there. I mean, you, you're going to get two, three, maybe three possessions more. That's a forward pass, by the way. Even though it's underhand, it's not a fumble, so it'll be an incomplete pass. So a good break for the Riders here. They'll certainly take that decision now. Keeps it a four-point game outside a field goal as Morrow has just nowhere to go against that defensive front for the Argos. Timeout, Toronto. It's been a good season for first-year OC Kelly Jeffrey. I know they frustrated with this losing skid they've been on, but you know we mentioned Dola Gallo's 400-yard passing game against the Lions. He spread the ball around, a couple thousand-yard receivers. Jamal Morrow close to a, th a thousand yards on the season rushing. And consider what's happened at quarterback for Saskatchewan when Absolutely. Trevor Harris comes in and looks very good, but he gets hurt early on. Mason Fine comes in. Fine got hurt in Montreal several weeks later in Dola Gala, the third on the depth chart coming into the season. Ends up starting his ninth game now, so you're right. I mean, they've certainly, hey, every team has had big tests when it comes to injuries. Certainly Saskatchewan has. Second and 12 now. Saw the flag come out right after the bump on Schaefer Baker, and I think he made the catch anyway. Pass interference, Toronto number 20. Ten yard penalty, automatic, first down. So it doesn't matter in terms of the catch or not as the sticks move up to the 22 of Saskatchewan. There's McFadden and a little bump right there just before the ball arrived. First and 10 for Dola Gallo. Can the Riders hang on and stay alive in the playoff race? Handing off. Once again, tough sledding. A couple of yards at most for Jamal Moore. Well, I guess you can experiment a little bit more when you're locked up first place in your division a month ago. But I, I just, I'm still a little puzzled as to Ryan Dinwiddie going for it on third and four when he could have made it a one-point game with lots of time left. Second and seven at the runner, 25. That's complete. It's caught up around the 35. Key and Schaefer Baker. Three minute warning has been issued. The drive continues. A first down there, thanks to the catch by Schaefer Baker. Saskatchewan, we've got Trey Ford and the Edmonton Elks taking on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who are in the top seed in the West. That is coming up next. And Kate back here at Mosaic, not over yet for the Riders, but they're getting closer to a chance to just stay alive. That's all they can ask for right now. And on the ground, oh my God, 
first down. Flag does come out, but there goes once again have Jamal Morrow all wrapped up. They got their big set. Saskatchewan in there right now. Holding. Saskatchewan number 51. That penalty is declined. Second down. Albert Awachi in as a tight end or fullback. They've got a, a big crew in there. Now they've got to go because of the penalty in second and long. They got to go with their regular offense and the receivers come back out. So second down and 10 coming up. We'll call it 11. Jake Dolegalis thrown for over 400 yards for the second time in his career. Second time this season. He's at 403. Three weeks ago against BC, he was at 409, but this has been a better game. Throwing a couple of touchdown passes against one pick. Passing situation now. Two and a half minutes on the clock, and the blitz is coming. Quickly gets rid of it, and he completes it, and he's hit hard, too. So that's Jared Stearns. Quantez Stiggers coming in as Stearns limps off. Yeah, I think this is Jake Dolagala's best game, you know, even if the numbers aren't the highest of, of his career yet because of that kind of play right there. He's recognized what the Argos have tried to do defensively. He's made those reads quickly, getting the ball out for the most part accurately. That's going to be short of the first down, however. Got the stop on the third down gamble, got a little breathing room and a chance to punt it away. Make it a long field. Riders have done a good job on special teams against a very dangerous returner, Javon Leak. Corsack with the punt. Leak is chased back. And once again, faking a little reverse there as he keeps going around the left edge. Micah Tights to push him out of bounds. And so there you go. Just under two minutes to go. Cameron Duke's coming back on. And the Argonauts need a touchdown to take the lead. Riders trying to hang on in a game they absolutely must win. Jeremy O'Day, the leaguer general manager of VP and operations of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He and Greg Dickinson certainly have faced a lot of heat. A six-game losing streak after they were a game above 500 Labor Day. Is it just me or was his beard turning gray as we were watching? Lots of stress here. Lots of excitement for the fans, too. So it's in the possibility of just staying alive the catch and gets another yard or so close to a first down for the Argos. Working tempo. 150 and counting. Got a shotgun on a second and short as Dukes takes off first down and he goes down again up at around the 45. Plenty of time. Greg Dickinson, his fourth season as head coach of the Riders. They were 13 and 5 and hosted the Western Final in 2019. Went to the West Final again in 21. 6 and 12 last year and tried to avoid that this year. Pressure coming and the pass is short, intended for and Danny at midfield. Well, interesting scenario here for Jason Shivers, the defensive coordinator for the Riders, to, you know, those first two plays, there's the pressure from Pete Robinson, but those first two plays, the Saskatchewan defense played pretty soft and conservative, and there was one first down. Now on that first down play, a little bit more pressure went with five instead of four. they got to go and try to win the game, not sit back and hope they don't lose it. hands up at the line of scrimmage as he lips off but it's forced the Argos to punt. Anthony Lanier is been moved around all season. He was a, a defensive end for a while. He's been a tackle, one of the highest paid defensive players in the league. Maybe his biggest, most important play. They gotta start guessing on these third downs. They are gonna keep going, of course. But a minute and a half to go only and they need a touchdown. Sindani. Richie Sindani. New Argo inside the 40 as the drive continues. How about that of the veteran Sindani? Six years in the league. Not a lot of playing time this year, but he plays this nonchalant. Calmly goes up, hangs on, and picks up extra yards after the catch. Wow. Several years with the Stampeders before. 
four going to Hamilton and now we're Toronto. So first and ten at the 39. Bobbled up. Jump ball. And nobody comes up with it. A flag does come out. There were players on both sides that would have had a shot at that football after it got deflected up. Illegal contact. Saskatchewan number 28. Ten yard penalty. The result will be a first down. Can't hit and make any contact beyond five yards, and there's just a straight jam. Inside the 30, first and 10, barely a minute left. Down near the five, it is caught by DeMonte Coxey. It'll be first and goal Toronto, needing a touchdown to take the lead. What a drive by Cameron Dukes, the backup quarterback. Calm, cool, and collected back shoulder throw to Coxey. And they're on the doorstep. Palpable tension here at Mosaic. As the Riders are at risk of letting another lead late in the game get away. The play by Richie Sandani on third down to keep the drive alive, to come and cool, collect, just get up there, rip it down, keep the drive alive. Dukes with another great throw to Coxie on the sideline, and Adam Boye crosses the plane. The Argos have the late lead, and there's under a minute to go. And a big extra point coming up here as well to make it a field goal lead. For Alfredo Lozada. He had missed an extra point earlier in the game, but he does put that one through to make it a 29-26 game. And in just under a minute, the Riders at the very least are going to need to drive down and get a field goal to tie the score. Remember the tension between Dukes and Ryan Dinwiddie on the sideline after the third down gamble they didn't get. That all goes away if they can hold on to this three-point lead. The decision to go for it, no big deal now if you can get the win. Same with the decision that Dukes made that's not sure why Coach Dinwiddie was upset with him, but whatever it was, again, it all goes away if they can steal this one. Well, as we talked about before, and this, you don't want Chad Kelly in, especially if he's hurting. And this is good experience, if nothing else, for Cameron Dukes in a, in a tense late game situation where they needed to come back. And if ever, they needed a big return from Mario Alford. Jared Stearns back there with him as well for this kick. Yeah, if you're Toronto, you're not kicking it to Mario Alford. I don't think you want to do that. Lozada handling the kickoff duties. 57 seconds on the clock. Yeah. It does go to Alford. Just outside the 20. And he gets through before Kassar gets him down, but he has it up at the 45. Brett Lother is tied for the longest field goal on the season this year. Had it right here against Calgary at 54 yards. Or excuse me, against the Ottawa Red Blocks. Well, Dolagala has time for four or five plays if he's efficient and he's about two first downs away from field goal range. Lauder had won a 54 to win it on the final play against Ottawa. So at the 45, clock ticking off to the right. Intercepted! Mason Pierce jumped in front of it and that should just about do it. At the worst possible time. season on the line. 
Jason Pierce, first year out of the Colorado School of Mines with his first CFL interception. You know, it's a similar play to that pick he threw in the first half. And again, we talked about it off the top. The one or two plays a game that have really hurt the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in this six-game skid that now will go to seven straight losses to end the season the same way they finished last season. One or two plays is the difference. Keeping it on the ground right side, Daniel Adabamoye. But he, he was trying to fit it in a wide throw in between two defenders. Saskatchewan. To punt it. Right, let's make and it. And there's a GM and a head coach that Forcing do not have a contract at the end of this season. A lot of speculation about the futures of Jeremy O'Day and Craig Dickinson. He's the number two receiver is the intended target. That's Bain. And then just take a look at how we try to fit it in. You see how the corner's falling off on that? And then Pierce is the high player. And Dolagala just got a little bit greedy on that one. He had time to go three or four plays and get field goal range. Only needed about 20 yards to, to extend this game. Tried to take a bigger chunk and pay for it. The Argos franchise record for wins in a season is 15. It's been done twice in 1996 and 97. That's out of a boy again. Takes a hit down out of bounds. But those were the Doug Flutie years. They won the Grey Cup both of those years. And Brian Dinwiddie is upset. 35 seconds. Clock stop there. Chad Kelly. With the start today, if they can hang on, he would improve to 15 and 1 in the season and 15 and 2 as a starter. But yeah, that's what they're they're chasing now in the 15 win club and still with a chance if they hang on here to make it 16 next week in Ottawa. But only one has ever done the 16 wins. Glenn Suter knew that team well. well. A handful of teams in that group won the cup, but just as many didn't. I was going to say that 16 and 2 team of Edmonton did not. So it doesn't entitle you to anything. However, it is a fantastic season, a record breaking season. And this is a very good football team. Haggerty the punt and doesn't get Alfred a chance. A beautiful punt by John Haggerty in his first game back in two months. And that one really makes it so daunting for the Riders with 29 seconds and trying somehow to get into field goal range as Dolagala gets another chance. Now you're down to three plays max. Secondary playing way off. You're going to talk, you know, 25, 30 yards off. Make sure they don't let anything in behind them. Last year, the Riders lost their last seven straight games to finish at 6 and 12. 26 seconds to go. Get out. You get it out, Emelis. 26 seconds now, 23. The Riders are still trying to avoid that same fate. Two or three plays here, and it, you know you got to take you, you got to take a shot now. I mean, the, the last time it was a little greedy because he had five or six plays for 20 yards. Now you got to take a shot. From the 17, 22 seconds. It's a shorter pass, out of bounds. Stern, but still at the 25. 19 on the clock. Toronto is just fine with that. I mean, again. You're going to need to do that seven more times to get in field goal range. So it's corner route, trip through three receivers to the side. You got Schaefer Baker up there. Throw one up, see if you can get a, a tip or a PI call. The Argos just send three, drop back, 17 seconds. Another shorter pass. Mitch Picton with it. And he is taken down at about the 33. 11 seconds. Need a deep ball. Just to get into range. Short off to the side and not caught. Samuel Endless. So five seconds left. See, the, the problem with two of those last, inner, you know, short throws, the problem with them is, is that now Dolagala, even if 
if he gets the big chunk, he doesn't have time to kick a field goal. May just be time for one final play. For the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Short again, and they'll toss it around. This is the last play. Barring penalty. It sails over Alfer's head. Out of bounds. The Toronto Argonauts have tied their franchise record for wins in a season at 15. And for Saskatchewan, the season is over. The talk in Toronto is going to be the health of Chad Kelly. He's got a little bit of a limp. We'll see what happens over the next few days there.